It's 1982, and the Buick Grand National came onto the scene and would quickly gain popularity for its sinister looks and performance. This car would become one to be remembered for years to come. But in 1989, GM also built another rare machine using the same DNA that might be even better. Meet the 1989 Turbo Trans Am with Grand National's now famous 3.8 liter turbocharged V6. Learn how it emerged as a powerhouse in the automotive world and how it was crowned the Corvette Killer. Pontiac faced some tough times in the mid-80s. The company was struggling to keep up with competition and sales were starting to slump. But Pontiac knew it had to innovate to attract performance enthusiasts. The brand had a rich history of building high-performance cars, but it needed something new, something exciting to get people talking again. The Trans Am was already a staple in Pontiac's lineup, but it needed a boost, literally. In 1989, the, Pony, the Firebird Trans Am was celebrating its 20th anniversary, and that year Pontiac was chosen to provide the pace car for the Indy 500. So rather than just building a special edition with some badging, things got a little crazy. To up the performance of the special trans, the special Trans Am, Pontiac opted not to go with a V8, but with a turbo, the turbocharged 3.8 liter V6 supplied by their buddies at Buick. The turbocharged V8 was similar to the engine used in the limited production 87 GNX, but received a few extra updates to make it the hottest of the of the breed, including new cylinder heads, reworked turbocharger, and more. And like the Grand National, the only Trans Am that would be available would be automatic. So this is 1989, and nothing can outshine GM's crown jewel, the Corvette. But despite Pontiac's best efforts to tone it down, it was faster by a lot. The conversions were done in California uh, from prototype automotive services, building the engines and supplying them to the F-body assembly line. The exterior between the Turbo Trans Am and the GTA looked the same except for some badging, but when it came to performance, there was no comparison. Officially, the Turbo Trans Am was rated at only 250 horsepower, but that figure was strongly un underrated, likely to avoid upsetting the Corvette team. In the real world, output was at least 300 horsepower, and the V6 gave the Turbo Trans Am some serious performance. Hey guys, if you enjoy our content, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel... We're part of the Amazon Affiliates program. We make a very small commission on anything you buy in our store, but we got all kinds of cool shit in there from accessories for every generation, Camaro and Firebird, books, you name it, and it's growing by the week. Really appreciate you guys. Let's get back to the video. So why was this called the Corvette Killer? Well, it's quite simple. As discussed earlier, despite Pontiac's best efforts to try and tame this new model, this car came in at average of 13.4 seconds and a quarter mile and zero to 60 in and around four and a half seconds, where the 1989 Corvette was on average of about 13.9 seconds and a zero to 60 at a little over six seconds. So it's easy to see why this was called a Corvette killer. So this car was not cheap by any means in 1989. The value of this car in 1989 was worth $30,000 and adjusted for inflation today is worth over $76,000, which puts it in place for some of the higher end sport uh, muscle cars we find today. A used 1989 uh, Turbo Trans Am on the market can range anywhere from in decent condition from $20,000 to $60,000. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and this look back on this 1989 Firebird Trans Am, uh, Turbo Trans Am. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the CCFG YouTube channel.